Hello you there. So today we're learning how to make a paratha. It's an Indian type of bread. Some people call it chapati, but I don't really know why people call it different name. We call it paratha back home. It's a very very simple and easy bread and you can make it for breakfast anytime, any day and it's very quick. Let's roll the intro. <laughs> Let's cook American food. But it's not American food. Well, it's not American food. So it's a very simple recipe. We start with 500 grams of flour. I'm not gonna tell you how much in cup because you need to measure your flour in grams. It's three cups. And one tablespoon of salt or eight grams of salt. And 285 grams of water or about a cup and about a cup and fourth maybe or a little bit about a cup and then one last ingredient a tablespoon of olive oil or any other oil you like and then we're gonna mix it within the sand mixer for about 10 minutes make sure you mix it in low speed all right the dough is ready see how good it looks and it is all intact all together a very good Ooh, dough that got beaten for a very long time all right and now we're gonna divide it into 100 grams parts and then we're gonna let it rest so the gluten get time to develop i need to change the camera angle all righty let's see how much this thing weighs see how good this dough is about 870 grams, so we can get about nine of them, nine pieces. Let's do it. All right, so as you can see, they are very stretchy, so we can form them into a ball. And when we form them, form them into a ball, we can now create our what they call them? Our paratha. So there is three different methods of creating this paratha and I'm gonna show you the three methods. Of course there is another million one but I'm gonna show you the three methods that I like the most. It's gonna evolve a lot of oil or ghee or butter so use your best. I love ghee so I'm gonna be using ghee in my recipe. You can substitute it with butter, you can substitute it with olive oil. Everything works exactly the same. Step number one oil your working surface. We'll need a lot of oil for this or a lot of ghee or a lot of butter. Just make sure you oil the working surface and your bowl and then just spread it in a circle. If it starts resisting you or pulling back just let it rest and then come back to it later because that means the gluten is not relaxed enough. All right, so just spread it as large as you can, as thin as you can. Get your bowl that you will let the stuff rest in and oil it. Just make sure you oil everything on this because we don't want the stuff to stick and we want it to be easy. And then get your ghee or your oil or your butter in, the, in your case and just brush it on the top. Be generous, don't be shy. So you can use vegetarian ghee if you want to use ghee but you don't want to make this bread non-vegetarian or non-vegan, that's an option. All right, after you get to this step, go to the long axis and fold it like an Asian, they call it like an Asian fan. Back and forth motion. So fold in and then out and then Fold in, then out, then fold in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. And then when you get your umbrella ready, just put it aside and roll it. And get the last part and shove it in the middle. And here you go, you have your first paratha bread. And we will let this rest for like half an hour to an hour so it keeps its shape and the gluten is relaxed. All right, method number two. Again, you have to form a bowl, make sure your surface is oiled. We're gonna try to make it a circular shape. If we failed, we're gonna go to method number three. This 
this is about good enough. It should be more circular than this. Then grab your pizza cutter, cut it to the center, and then start folding it and rotating it like a flower. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Go back. <laughs> Generously brush it with your ghee, oil, or water. It's, you know, it's similar to the croissant, but except it doesn't have a yeast in it. And it's not Italian or whatever European country, country croissant came from. I think I did it in one of my episodes and I said what country it came from. And then just roll it. And then after you roll it, just make sure you press it in and open it. Open the flower. And this is our second method. And we will let it rest next to the first one. Our third and last method, again, you need to form a ball. And after your ball is formed, we are going to spread it as thin as we can. It's really similar to the first method, but there is one added to it. I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil because the surface is kind of dry. All right, it's really thin now. Make sure you brush it again with ghee or oil or whatever you want. Yeah. As you can see, this is not the healthiest type of bread you want to make in your life. But it tastes really good, honestly, and it goes well with breakfast food or anything. Okay, after that, just start cutting it with the pizza cutter that I shouldn't be using on this silicone crap. Huh. Well, you know what, never mind. Just cut it with the pizza cutter into thin strips as thin as you possibly can. All right, after you cut it thinly, grab it from the center and start pushing the straps together. And then when you gather them all together, just roll it again into a circle. And tuck it again. And there you go, your third way to make parata. And just keep going with the rest until you finish. And yeah, I should have not used the knife on this. All right, after we finish all our rolls, we just cover them and put them and let them rest in the fridge for an hour. When you get to this point, you can put them in the fridge up to three days and they will be fine. Just make sure you cover them with a plastic wrap and oil them good enough. Like see how oily they are? All right. Our bread rested for an hour in the fridge and now we're gonna work on it. The gluten should be relaxed and everything should be good. Okay, the same working surface with a lot of oil. What we're gonna do now is just spreading it into a circle. We're gonna try to make it as good of a circle as possible. Don't go so hard on it because we want to keep the layering. See, when it pulls back like that, that means the gluten is not 100% relaxed, which is fine in this case, because it's not really pulling hard, so that's good. I like it about this, um, probably like half a centimeter thick, that's good. Next to frying it, put your non-stick frying pan on a medium heat, let the oil heat up a little bit, make sure you spread it nicely. And then, when it's hot enough, grab your bread and fry it. We're gonna fry it side by side, so each side until it's good and fried. And then we're gonna flip it to the other side. And if you're using a non-stick, use a plastic or a rubber spatula. Never ever use a steel one, because you're gonna scratch it and I'm gonna be mad at you. That sizzling means it's cooking. When the top side looks like it dried up a little bit, Drizzle it with some oil and flip it. And if it didn't brown enough, just flip it back. Yeah, see, it didn't brown enough, so I'm just gonna keep it cooking on that side for a little bit more until it browns more. Maybe during that time, a lot of cold food from the supernova and got deposited in the earth and the earth. I'm not really quite sure, maybe on the video, the whole video is wrong. Alright, then we flip it when it's ready, yeah. 
and then when both sides are cooked you repeat with the rest of them and let's do that repeating magic where I just clap my hand and everything is cooked all right the bread is ready it arrived you can see how good it looks and you can see the different layers so because of the type of flour we have here in the US the bread look really pale but if you use a little bit of a mixture between white and wheat it's gonna look even better and this is the first attempt you know always the first one doesn't look good so you can eat it in so many different ways let me show you one way you go ahead and grab your cream cheese and well, this look good it's not all just use it on it you can eat it with eggs for breakfast you can eat it with soup for lunch or for dinner so many different options it's really good and really really full of oil which is unhealthy probably but I mean who cares when it's delicious you can see that even this piece that did not turn up well still can have like you can see all the layerings in it mm. and taste test it's actually good I recommend it so you over there, thank you a lot for watching, please like and subscribe and comment down below. What do you want me to cook next? Just let me know and I will cook it, because I am a good cook, I know how to cook everything, I'm, I am, um, bye.